Hey everybody, Pastor Ryan, the roving giant here. I'm getting ready for a hike today, and I just got dropped off here on the uh, M9 section of Finger Lakes Trail in Bully Hill State Forest. And I'm excited. This is going to be a two-night adventure. Uh, I'm going to go to the Bully Hill Lean To tonight, and then I'm going to go to a the cabin in Klipnaki State Forest. And uh, well, we're going to hit this road it's all nice and snowy got a new set of snowshoes here and uh, trying out some camera gear and yeah so we're gonna hit the trail I uh, no idea what's in store for us so come along for the ride So I'm gonna to talk to you guys while I have breath in my lungs and while I'm still doing good before this trip gets really challenging. In the winter, there's some tricks of the trade that you learn pretty quickly, just out of experience. One, keep your gloves on. Two, you need less layers while hiking than you think and you need more while sitting still than you think. So you're changing your clothes a lot. You're moving them around because when you sweat, that stuff just stays inside and you get cold when you slow down. So your goal is to get as little sweat as possible on the outset while moving so that you stay dry and you're able to stay warmer because you stay drier. So, there's tip number one for the trip. I uh, seem to have arrived at the first trail register right here. Let's uh, let's sign in. You are here. Last register was November 25th, so nobody's been by here in quite a while. <laughs> Alright, let's be on with it. One layer down already. Just like I said, you gotta keep switching the layers. I was starting to get sweaty. Don't want none of that when it's cold outside. Cause that moisture will just take you. But, gosh, this is just beautiful out here. It's just pristine woods. You got pines and, or not pines, these are spruce or hemlock or fir of some kind. And then, over on the other side here is a big old hill with all this uh, hardwood. But yeah, man, this is just a beautiful hike so far. I'm a big fan. And uh, I'll keep you posted as we keep going. 
just to get you guys up to speed on what's happening, I started this trip right here by the number six, right where the trail meets Bully Hill Road. And I've been working my way up the trail to the northwest. The next checkpoint I should hit is this parking spot. After I get there, that's about a mile and a half, a little over a mile and a half. And I'm gonna follow the road over, head up, follow the trail up and around to the Bully Hill lean-to, which should be essentially another 1.6 miles. We are doing decent on sunlight. It's getting close to the horizon there, but this should be some more beautiful hiking along the Finger Lakes Trail. Every trail, every trip that I go on, I tend to find a new piece of gear that would be really useful to me. And so far this trip, the name of the game, if I can show you, gators. My legs are so through and gators would just absorb that moisture a bit and give me a chance to stay dry, keep the waterproofing, but hey, you learn from every single trip. You learn something new. So I'm gonna try out a new feature on my snowshoes. I'm about to head up this hill here and I'm gonna try out this heel bar. I'm supposed to make it easier. Go up hills, because it puts you up on your toes. So let's try it out. Oh, wow. <laughs> that actually really does make a big difference. I'm slipping because I'm clumsy and I'm trying to film myself all while walking up a hill and having one hand on two poles, but the amount of traction difference is incredible at this other angle. So I'm gonna focus on going up this hill so <laughs> I don't fall on my face, all right? We'll catch up with you guys later. So, I've come to a trail junction here. Uh, trail junction, it's not really a trail junction, it's just, there's Finger Lakes Trail, it's a landmark. Here's the, uh, the road past me, and that's the direction I'm gonna be headed. The road also goes back that way, the Snow Machine Trail, Snow Machine Trail, I can speak, I promise. Um, and there's where I came from. So, I'm gonna take a quick breath because there's a hill coming up here and this will be my last big push to get up to the Bully Hill lean-to. So I took my break and I'm heading up this hill that you see behind me. Uh, but a couple, uh, probably about a couple two tree snowmobilers came whizzing by, waved. It's always cool. Nice when other people are out here and enjoying the beautiful snow. It's hit or miss whether people say they'll enjoy the winter, but I know for me, the winter is just, it's the season to be out here, man. It's just gorgeous. I mean, look at this. It's just the sun shining through the trees, and it's crisp, the air feels good, there's crunchy snow, everything is just like, covered in a layer of clean. It's beautiful. So I'm working my, up with my way up this trail and it's a bit crunchy because it looks like some snowmobilers have worked their way up the trail. So my snowshoes aren't going through powder, they're going through snow machine tracks. But I'm a little bit farther up here and I'll be Back to blazing my own trail. Looks like somebody was out here doing a bit of bushcrafting. There's a nice little fire ring here. Seems like it'd be a really cool camp spot for another day. 
but love it when people are out building shelters. It's so cool. So I made it to the top of the hill. There's this trail split here. This is where I came from. I came from over in that direction. There's a road over here. Seems like primarily used for snow machines, at least this time of year. And that's where I'm headed. So I'm gonna bring you along. I started about 1.30ish, 1.45 in the afternoon. And it's a little after three. So I've been going about an hour and a half. I've covered probably about two miles, a little over two miles. It's slow going in the snow with just snowshoes, but I am slow going filming, but it's just a beautiful trail. I don't know, it's just something about this man. It's just it's just gorgeous here. Thanks for coming along with me. This is great. Isn't this fun? I was hiking along and I realized I had just told you guys that the trail was the last, this last turn was the last turn before heading over to Bully Hill lean-to. But that's not exactly true. I double checked the map. I head up here a little ways. The trails, oh, this is cool. Just all these pine trees. Uh, not pine trees, spruce trees or fir trees or hemlock trees, I, I'm not sure. It's one of those, it's not a pine tree. But this trail's gonna head straight here for a while. But after it goes straight, it's gonna take a turn, head up to Mike Dixon Road. After Mike Dixon Road, then we're at the last 0.7-ish miles. Um, before the Bully Hill lean-to. So I think we're doing decent on sunlight and we should be out of here over to the lean-to before the sun fully makes it over the horizon. Hopefully enough time to gather up some firewood and have a beautiful little campfire to cook over tonight. Uh, I had to turn the camera on for this section. It's just this right here is what winter camping is all about. It's just these tall, tall pine trees. And it's just like this little secluded spot in here. It's just so quiet. It's just. Uh, I'm sorry. I just have to stop to enjoy this. This is just so cool. Absolutely silent. Except for my big mouth. So I'm just coming out of the mo last major landmark, or coming to the most last major la landmark. It's another road. This is Mike Dixon Road, and just came out of this section of the FLT, and I am heading to this last section here, and that should bring me right to the Bully Hill Lean To, another 0.7 miles. and then we'll be able to set up camp. This section of trail has become real interesting. It's been mostly downhill, 
which is the opposite of everything that I've done so far. Um, but as the sun is getting close to the horizon over here, the air is getting chilly. My ears are starting to really feel the cold, but I don't want to get my nice warm beanie uh, damp yet. I just saw a deer. Cool. Um, I don't want to get my, my beanie wet with sweat yet, so I'm going to um, leave this hat on. But I shouldn't be too much farther. I would guess another quarter mile or so. Almost there. I have officially spotted the lean-to here, if you can see it back there in the woods. There she blows. Alright, not much farther. It appears that I will be staying in the lap of luxury. This lean-to is brand spanking new. Step one of making camp. This looks nice and dead. One down. There seems to be a sufficient amount of firewood in the woods here. I may grab another piece or two, but I think before it gets dark, I'm going to try to get my hammock and camp set up. So, I got my hammock all set up here. Got the sleeping bag inside and got my whole ready all set up. This is a original Roving Giant hammock, so if you're interested in buying one, I'm selling them. Uh, just <laughs> leave, leave a comment. I'm not trying to sell you stuff. Uh, just want you to enjoy the trip. Um, we got an underquilt here from Hammock Gear. This is the Hammock Gear Incubator Zero Degree Underquilt. Um, as you can see, the camera's kind of struggling with the lighting. We are right at the end of daylight here. Um, so now that my camp is set up and I didn't have to set my tarp up, I'm just going to do a little bit of organizing, and then I'm going to clear out this fire pit and uh, get this campfire going so I can have dinner, which is sausages. It's about 5.30 p.m. ish, and uh, well, I got my campfire going, 
I got my stove a burning. I'm gonna have some nice sausage for dinner with some penne and uh, red sauce, and I'm excited about it. Um, but I am running out of daylight, so I'm gonna sign off for now because I don't have any form of lighting to <laughs> make this video any good, and you don't want to just stare at the dark while you listen to me talk. So. Um, for now, uh, I guess I'm saying good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Psych. I, I, I'm not actually going to bed yet, but uh, I just had to, I had to show off my meal situation, my fire situation. We got a really good camp going on here. So first, check that out. Mm, yeah, that's some, that's some penne with red sauce, and. Uh, it's looking really good, and then if you come over this way, and check out campfire with a roasting little sausage. Italian sausage to go with the red sauce. Tomorrow is andouille sausage to go with uh, this like pesto. Yeah, that's where it's at. You know what I'm saying? So. <sighs> This is a good camp. Dinner's done. Uh, I'm working on boiling some water just so I have a little bit of extra to put in my sleeping bag with me and keep warm for the night in case I'm thirsty or anything, need something to drink in the morning. I'll probably have some nice hot tea in the morning, which I'm excited about. Um, <clears throat> but, man, this has been an awesome trip so far. I, I, uh, that pine forest was really cool, and, uh, I, I don't know, it's, uh, it was just the right amount of time for my hike to come in. I'm glad I didn't go any longer. Um, I got a lot of nice peace time, and I'm, I'm disappointed I didn't get it recorded, but, I, I heard an owl, I'm not sure what kind. Um, if I hear it again, I'll try to turn the camera on so I can record the sound and maybe you, you folks can tell me what kind of owl it is, but it was really cool to hear the owl out there. And I, I heard coyotes early on. And, um, I'm hoping that it's an active animal night. But while I've been sitting here by the fire, it's, it's just been quiet quiet, it's been peaceful, it's been calm, and honestly, it, it's, it's giving me a chance to just reflect on, reflect on my circumstances lately. I, I, I left a job that was my normal job, my wife and I, we moved to this new job as a pastor down in Warsaw, and, uh, it's, uh, it's been such a breath of fresh air for me to take on this new role. I've been preparing to be a pastor for uh, three and a half years now. I'm in the last semester of my seminary career, and uh, it's it's just really, really cool. This group of people that I'm ministering with are just amazing people. They're so encouraging to me as I'm learning my way. And uh, My wife has found a job at, at, at the library where she really feels her passion and she's, she's getting into some of her other passions and I'm super excited for her. And I don't know, this, this trip is, it's just giving me some mental space to sit and reflect. And a lot of times when I sit and reflect, I I go to, to dark places, things that I'm sad about, things that I miss, things that are, that hurt. But today, uh, I, I'm just feeling gratitude. I just feel an immense amount of gratitude for uh, a body that can bring me out here, for uh, a God who guides me in the circumstances like we have now. My wife and I just bought a house and the offer got accepted and we're going to be moving in there uh, in the next month or two. And I, I tell you... I don't got much to be sad about at the moment. Things are going pretty well. 
and uh, I'm praising God for that. It's really, it's really quite cool. So, um, thanks for coming along with me on this trip and for watching this video. I, I uh, sometimes when I'm out here by myself, it feels like just silly. I'm sorry, the smoke's just blowing right in my eyes. You know how it goes. Whew. But just being out here by myself sometimes can get lonely. I don't know. I don't know if I would go with lonely, but definitely, uh, I'm not crying. That's smoke in my eyes. I promise that's smoke in my eyes. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's not that it gets lonely. It, it's honestly, it's kind of boring when you're just by yourself. Sometimes it's really peaceful. It's nice and quiet and I enjoy that time of solitude and peace, but sometimes you just are bored by not having anybody to hang out with and uh, shooting this video has been kind of a, a nice supplement. I mean, I'd much rather have somebody come along on the trip with me and, and share in the adventure, but when there's nobody to come along, Shooting this video, it feels like you're here with me. It, it, I don't know why, it's weird. I'm sitting here in the middle of the woods completely by myself, but I don't feel as alone because I am shooting this video. And I don't know, I'm, I'm grateful for technology too right now. I, I <laughs> It's just really cool. And I, I, I was just taking my water off. It's done boiling. Now it needs to sit and cool back down before I can put it in a plastic bag. But I don't know, it's... There's just something really peaceful about just sitting here by the fire and talking to the folks who either wish they could come along on this trip with me or just find it fascinating that I go camping in the winter or whatever your reason is for watching the video. Uh, I appreciate you because you're helping this trip feel less uh, solitary to me. I'm going to sit here by the fire for probably another, I don't know, half hour to an hour, somewhere around there. Let the fire die down a bit. And then I'll uh, crawl into my hammock and uh, I'll check, when the, check in with you guys before I fully go, go to bed and go to sleep. So, um, yeah, we'll talk to you a bit later. So I'm here filling in my entry for the trail register and I heard another owl. I guess it doesn't want to be recorded. So it's about 8 o'clock and I decided to call it a night been a great day. Um, tomorrow I hope I'm going to be able to take as much video as I'd like, but I realized that the power charger that I brought with me uh, doesn't work with my new phone. So <laughs> uh, we'll see if my uh, phone isn't dead by tomorrow evening, but I'll try to be sparse but intentional about my video recording. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see you in the morning. Morning, everybody. Slept well last night. It feels colder than it is. It's about 1920, but man, I tell you, it feels like it's about 8. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, up this morning about 6.30, 6.45-ish. Uh, starting to have a little breakfast, uh, sugar style Having some breakfast from the hammock. But I uh, just got a little bit of water on the bowl and then I'll start getting myself out of the hammock and packed up and heading on the trail. We're up and at him this morning. Just got my bag all packed up, got my gear sitting there ready to put my snowshoes on and get the poles on and hit the trail. Today we have a 
about eight and a half miles to do to get to the cabin. Um, I'm really hoping the cabin has a wood fireplace, but hey, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I'm kicking myself for not having the right cable for my camera, so I'm going to try to video as much as I can, but I may run out of time to video, in which case I'll give you an update at the end uh, after I can recharge the phone. But it is what it is, and uh, let's hit the trail. Yesterday, we came in from point number six there, went up by Bully Hole Road, followed that road over here, came up to Mike Dixon Road, and then up to this Bully Hill lean-to. That reliable stream, yes, there's water in it, but it's, uh, that RS stands for reliable stream. It wasn't as reliable as you'd hope during the winter. You can tell, it's always running in the summer, but it was all frozen over. It was tough to get to water there. I ended up just boiling snow a bunch. Now, today, we're gonna go point six. Our next landmark is gonna be Bush Road. After that, there's a view where the little binoculars are. Then after Bush Road, we're gonna follow the edge of Gas Spring Road all the way up to here to Slater Creek Road, past another reliable stream. And then do that all the way up to Roots Road, go by the ponds, follow the road there. There's an old stone quarry there, which should be cool to see. Nice landmark. After the second pond, follow our way through here. Our next landmark will be another reliable stream in a bivouac area. Another view. Hit Slater Creek Road, then Frenner Road with another view, and then Bossard's Cabin. Bossard's Cabin. This should be a, a fun, full day. We'll figure out where we want to eat lunch when that comes, if I decide to stop for lunch. I may just keep hiking through. But, let's hit the trail. ditch the snowshoes and change up my my gear so I can stay cool as I hike. Just wanted to touch base with you quick. My phone's uh, storage space is running out since my battery is dead, or almost dead. I need to be really conservative. Um, so hey, you learn these things, you know? You gotta just learn each time you do it.